Hello, welcome to this tutorial video on the anatomy of uh, the ruminant liver. The liver is the largest gland in the animal body and uh, is essential to the life of the animal. It is reddish brown in color and uh, it is normally covered with a connective tissue capsule. And the, the, the liver has uh, several functions, among which include uh, the following major ones. It is involved in the formation and storage of animal starch or glycogen. It also secretes the bile. It is involved in detoxification of poisons and drugs, and it is also involved in the breakdown of uric acid as well as the formation of urea, and it is also involved in the desaturation of fatty acids. So in this video, I have uh, described the surfaces, lobes, borders, and the attachments of uh, the ruminant liver. So here is what you will learn and be able to do after going through this tutorial video. So you'll be able to state the functions of the liver and uh, you'll be able to describe the external anatomy of uh, the ruminant liver in terms of its lobes and its uh, surfaces and borders. You'll also be able to describe in detail the diaphragmatic and visceral surfaces of uh, the ruminant liver. Uh, you'll also be able to state the important features of uh, the dorsal border of uh, the ruminant liver. You will also be able to name and briefly describe the various ligaments and connective tissues that anchor the liver in the abdominal cavity. You also be able to explain the surface anatomy of the liver of uh, the ruminant and point out areas for taking biopsies as well as uh, performing percussions on the ruminant liver. And uh, you should be able to answer some selected questions that are based on the learning outcomes of this uh, tutorial video. So on this slide, I will consider the external anatomy of the ruminant liver by looking at uh, the surfaces and uh, the borders of the ruminant liver. So the ruminant liver is uh, conceptually considered to comprise of uh, lobes, surfaces and uh, borders. Yeah. So then the ruminant liver has uh, two surfaces and uh, four borders. The two surfaces are known as uh, the diaphragmatic surface and uh, the visceral surface. The diaphragmatic surface uh, follows uh, the hollow shape of uh, the right half of uh, the diaphragm. So it tends to mimic the shape of the diaphragm or the liver itself is the one that produces the dome shapeness of uh, the right side of uh, the diaphragm. And the diaphragmatic surface is convex, of course, and it faces dorsally, cranially and uh, to the right of uh, the median plane. Uh, there is a small part of the diaphragmatic surface which is in contact with the last two or three ribs. And uh, sometimes uh, it is also in contact with the flank at uh, the lambocostal angle. Uh, then you have a long triangular area on the dorsal part of the diaphragmatic surface which does not have a serous covering and this is because it is attached to the diaphragm. So this area is enclosed by the two separated layers of uh, the right limb of uh, the coronary ligament and uh, the coron coronary ligament is just uh, one of uh, the ligaments of uh, the liver that, uh, is, that attaches the liver to the diaphragm. We are going to see uh, and uh, make a brief description of it later on. The borders of uh, the liver are the dorsal, the ventral border, uh, the right border, as well as uh, the left border. The dorsal border lodges the, the vena cava in, the, uh, in an area which is known as uh, the sulcus vena cavae. So on this diagram, which is a goat liver that has been fixed in formalin, we can see the diaphragmatic surface. And normally this di diaphragmatic surface is uh, usually covered by the, the diaphragm. And in this picture, the diaphragm has been uh, reflected from the liver. So this is uh, where the uh, liver follows uh, the, the dome shape of uh, the diaphragm, when the diaphragm is covering this diaphragmatic uh, surface. Then also another, another feature that we can uh, recognize here is uh, what is known as uh, the notch for the round ligament. And uh, the round ligament is another of uh, the the liver ligaments that help in attaching the liver to to the diaphragm but uh, in this case usually in uh, uh, old animals old ruminants uh, the round ligament would have disappeared that it is no longer visible so those are the surfaces and borders of uh, the ruminant liver so having looked at uh, the diaphragmatic surface of the liver as well as uh, considered some borders of the liver we can now look at uh, the visceral surface of the liver. So the visceral surface is uh, concave and it is that surface which is opposite the diaphragmatic surface. So while the diaphragmatic surface is convex, the visceral surface is con concave. 
and its most important feature is the, the porta hepatis, which is a depression that is bounded by the papillary process, the caudal process, and the area of adhesion for the pancreas. So those are the three structures that uh, make the boundaries for this uh, porta hepatis. The portal vein and uh, the hepatic artery enter and uh, the common hepatic duct leaves the liver at the porta hepatis. So that porta hepatis is a region where these structures are connected to the liver. And uh, you have several hepatic lymph nodes that are also present at uh, the porta hepatis. Then the gallbladder fossa, which extends from uh, the dorsal part of the ventral border of the liver, is more distinct in the sheep and goat than in the ox. There is also a line of attachment for the lesser omentum, which passes obliquely from the esophage impression to the porta hepatis. When uh, the liver is fixed in situ, the visceral surface shows uh, a large central or meso impression and uh, this produces most of uh, the concavity in the ox. We'll now briefly talk about the lobes of uh, the ruminant liver. So the lobes of uh, the ruminant liver are not uh, precisely demarcated by fissures as uh, are in the dog. So to differentiate between the lobes, normally landmarks on the liver are used. So the ruminant liver has uh, four lobes. These include uh, the right lobe, the left lobe, the caudate lobe, and also the quadrate, quadrate lobe. The liver lobes are more distinct in the sheep and goat than in the cow. And uh, the caudate lobe uh, lies uh, between the vena cava, the caudal vena cava, and uh, the left branch of uh, the portal vein. Then the caudate lobe has uh, two processes. These include uh, the larger and elongated caudate process, as well as uh, the smaller and uh, variable papillary process. So the coded process uh, covers most of the area of uh, the visceral surface of the right lobe and uh, there is a deep uh, renal impression which is formed in the coded process and also on the right uh, dorsal lobe of uh, the cow liver. Then the quadrate lobe is uh, normally indistinct in the cow liver. The quadrate lobe of the cow liver is uh, located between the left and uh, right lobes that is on the ventral border. Now, let us consider how uh, the ruminant liver is anchored or fixed within the abdomen. So, several ligaments help to fix uh, or anchor the liver in its uh, normal location. And uh, the liver is anchored in the abdominal cavity by various ligaments and uh, connective tissues. And because it is uh, such a large organ, it requires uh, about five ligaments to keep it in relative uh, immobility in its uh, anatomical location. And uh, the liver ligaments are just uh, double layered folds of peritoneum that attach the liver to the surrounding organs or to the abdominal wall. And the majority of these ligaments associated with the liver are just remnants of uh, embryological blood vessels that regressed as uh, you know the fetus that developed in the uh, in the womb or in the uterus. So we'll have a look at uh, each of uh, those uh, ligaments that we can find in the ruminant animal. I will now list and briefly explain the different uh, ligaments that attach the liver to the abdominal wall as well as uh, to the diaphragm. So uh, the diagram on your right shows some of uh, the ligaments such as the falciform ligament and uh, the coronary ligament. So normally you have uh, quite a number of them but uh, in the ruminants uh, you have uh, five main ones and uh, two of them would have regressed in the adult animal. So the first one to consider is uh, the falciform ligament, which is uh, just attached to the diaphragmatic surface. And this is along a line from uh, the esophageal impression to the notch of uh, the round ligament. So in this diagram, we can see where the falciform ligament is shown. So that's the white line that is coming from uh, the esophageal impression to the notch uh, for the round ligament. Then the next uh, ligament is of course uh, the round ligament and this is just a vestige or remnant of the umbilical vein which existed in the embryo of fetus and it is uh, a slight thickening of the caudal free edge of uh, the falciform ligament. So the two, that is the falciform ligament and round ligament in the embryo, they are normally connected to one another. But uh, these two in uh, adult ruminants, that is the falciform and round ligament, normally disappear. But in some uh, animals, you can still find them. Then the next uh, ligament is the right triangular ligament. This one attaches the caudolateral angle of uh, the right lobe to the dorsal abdominal wall. You cannot see it on this diagram. 
Then uh, we also have uh, the left triangular ligament, which extends from the esophageal impression all the way up to the diaphragm, ventral to the esophageal hiatus. You also cannot see it on this diagram. Then, of course, we have uh, the coronary ligament. This one attaches the liver to the diaphragm on a line from the right uh, triangular ligament along the right side of uh, the cord of cava and around the ventral margin of uh, the foramen vena cava to the left of the triangular ligament. This one is shown on the diagram as uh, those two white lines uh, coming from uh, the esophageal impression. Then uh, we also have uh, the hepatorino uh, ligament. This uh, passes from the coded uh, process to the ventral surface of uh, the right kidney. And uh, finally we have uh, the lesser omentum. And this one passes obliquely from the esophageal impression to the porta hepatis. So those are the ligaments that you find in the ruminant animal. And uh, remember that uh, the two ligaments, the falciform ligament and uh, the round ligament, uh, in some adult uh, ruminants would uh, not uh, be functional or they would have uh, disappeared over time. But you can still find them in other adult animals. So on this slide, I will look at uh, the surface anatomy of uh, the ruminant liver and I will begin by defining what surface anatomy is. So surface anatomy is uh, just uh, the study of uh, the surface landmarks which correspond to the deeper structures that are hidden from view. And this is both in the static pose and uh, in motion. So whether, the, for example, when the animal is uh, breathing and in this case if we are considering the position of the liver, you know, when the, the diaphragm moves uh, cranially and caudally, uh, how does the position of uh, the liver change? And when it's in a static uh, motion that is not uh, moving, uh, what is the normal position of the liver, including other organs? But in this particular case, we are referring to the liver. So in short, we are saying, how do you visualize the positions of the organs in the animal body? So that is surface anatomy. Now, in the abdominal cavity of uh, the ruminant animal, the most uh, cranial organ immediately behind the diaphragm is the liver, and particularly on the right side of uh, the median plane. But on the left side of uh, the median plane, we have the reticulum, which is in contact with uh, the diaphragm, and uh, the liver is entirely displaced to the right of the midline because of the presence of the, the rumen and uh, the reticulum on the left side. So the liver extends from the sixth intercostal space all the way up to the upper part of the last rib, and in the ox, the liver is in contact with the right abdominal wall from the ventral end of uh, the seventh rib back to the last rib. It is not uh, very accessible to diagnostic procedure, and this is because much of it is covered by the lung. So if you tried to uh, obtain, for example, a biopsy at those landmarks that are mentioned, you may end up uh, injuring the lung, so it is not easily accessible. Then from the 10th uh, costochondral junction, the border of uh, the, the ovine liver extends uh, cododosally to the right kidney at the last rib. And uh, the fundus of uh, the gallbladder is in contact with the diaphragm opposite the ventral part of the 10th or 11th rib in the ox. You have now come to the end of uh, this tutorial video on the anatomy of uh, the ruminant liver so you should be able to state the functions of uh, the liver should be able to describe the external anatomy of the ruminant liver in terms of its lobes its surfaces and uh, borders you should also be able to briefly describe the anatomy of the diaphragmatic and visceral surfaces of uh, the ruminant liver you should be able to state one important feature of the dorsal border of uh, the ruminant liver and you should also be able to name and briefly describe the various ligaments and connective tissues that help to hold the liver in the abdominal cavity. And uh, you should uh, be able to explain the surface anatomy of the liver of the ruminant. These are some of uh, the references and uh, resources that were used in making this video. Thank you for watching.